Hey there. Today I'm going to do a swipe with some intention, as I usually try to do, and hopefully this will work out. Before I start, I just had to show you. I have these under my canvases. So I poured, I poured two peacock colored um, canvases, dirty pours that went with my peacock feather canvas I had done earlier on. And um, I had leftover paint and I poured it on some plastic and I just wanted to show you how pretty that is. I don't know if you can see the metallics, the shimmer of it. Um, but this is on plastic. See the shininess of the plastic? And this is the piece of plastic. It's about, I would say a 16 by 20. And it was in a pack, a multi-pack of canvases that had a piece of plastic on the front and then it was wrapped in plastic. But it's heavy duty plastic and I just cut off a piece to do my leftover pours on. So this is a great way if you find plastic in packaging with your canvases or sometimes they come with picture frames. Um, it's like thicker plastic. You can hear how, uh, how thick it is. This is a great way to pour. I can peel this off if I want to. I can also glue cabochons on top of it, the little glass domes, and cut around them and peel off the plastic on the back, and I can make jewelry with it. But this is so pretty, I may even frame it and maybe do a little bit of artwork on top of it or just make it a framed piece of uh, peacock colors. So just wanted to show you that. I also wanted to show you this one that I did the other day. I've only got one coat so far of polyurethane on it. And um, this was the one that I did with the air compressor. And I am just, I am just really loving this one. I, it kept, the air compressor kept really pushing the paint way harder than I wanted to. But the outcome was these little flowers that I didn't plan on. It, they just happened. And um, so anyway, I've got a couple more coats of gloss varnish to put on it. And this thing is, it just, it brings it to life. So I just wanted to show you that. It's really cool. So one of my followers mentioned that she loves seeing all my tropical looking uh, feathery, leafy looking artwork that I do by swiping and she mentioned that she would love to see um, pastas. And uh, I don't know, like in the United States, I think people know what hostas are. I don't know if they grow in other countries, but they're big leafy plants that are kind of variegated leaves. They're, the leaves are, you know, can be really large and a lot of times they'll be green and they'll have a white or a creamy colored edge and sometimes they're yellow edges and they're just really big beautiful tropical leaves that are really kind of large and they bloom during certain periods of the year with stalks of these little clusters of purple flowers so that is what i'm thinking i'm going to try to attempt today and you notice I say attempt because when you do fluid painting, uh, I'm moving the camera here. When you do fluid painting, sometimes you don't have as much control as you would like to have. So I'm going to attempt to do it. And the colors that I possibly am going to use today, I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of them, but. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, give you the list of colors. These are deco art colors. And so my, my canvases were already black when I purchased them and I have skim coated a coat of black, 50-50 mixture of black and lamp black and Floetrol. 
And you don't really need water when you use the Deco Art bottle paints, because really when you mix Floetrol with the Deco Art paints in the bottle, it's just really about the right consistency, unless you want it a little bit water, you know, a little bit wetter, and then you add more water. And then I swipe with white, and everything's in squeeze bottles pretty much, and here's the titanium white. These are my go-to colors. Um, I have a bottle that has the primary magenta. This is a premium because they don't have magenta in a bottle. I have alizarone crimson, which is a little deeper. I have my standard go-to, which I love, the deeper dark purple called dioxazine purple and the lighter one called Purple Rain. I have um, Desert Turquoise, which is in my turquoise bottle, squeeze bottle. This is Peacock Teal, but I add blue and I make it a little bit darker and more vivid. Dark green and dark blue. Here's my regular green called Festive Green, and then I have my bright limey green, which is called Sour Apple. And my standard, usually in the yellow bottle, is Cadmium Yellow. I also have a little cup of Marigold, which is a deeper golden color. So I may put a little bit of this on, which is not in a squeeze bottle. And I have this from at the beginning of the week, and to be honest, I do not remember what brand it is or color or anything, but it's a shimmery green that's more uh, like a lighter lime green, but it's not truly lime, but it has some uh, iridescent color to it, a little bit of sparkle, so I may use that too. So my plan is to do the bigger leaves down here with a few stalks and some purpley toned flowers at the top and we'll see how that works out because you only have so much control with your paint. Um, that's why I do use squeeze bottles because I can control it better than I do in cups. I'm just going to basically do a few outlines. of the um the leaves and i don't want both of them to be identical so yeah you know, switch off here a little bit maybe one down here and this is you know it's supposed to be kind of an abstract representation obviously I'm going to put white on the edges and swipe inward, I think. So I want, this is the peacock teal, and I'm just going to put a little bit on the kind of the outer edge of this green as my darkest color. All of these paints are mixed 50-50 with Floetrol. They are, they, I keep them in my bottles for weeks and I continually add to them. So it, they're not freshly mixed paint. This is stuff that I keep mixed up for quite some time. And it does have silicone, at least a drop per ounce of paint mixture. So in, a, in an eight ounce bottle, I'll have at least eight drops of silicone and possibly a little more. I don't really measure. I just kind of squeeze and do my thing. This is turquoise and I'm gonna just put just a hint of turquoise, not on both sides, but just, um, you know, a bit here or there. 
So I want my lighter colors to be inside of the leaf, I think. Okay, so here's the uh, the shimmery green. I'm gonna add a little bit, and I don't, I don't think, it's kind of dull compared to these brighter colors. So I don't think I'm gonna put a whole lot Because I really don't, I don't think it's going to show up, to be honest. Sometimes when you have shimmery colors, unless you use all metallics, the metallics kind of get lost with the regular opaque color that covers it. So, I am sure this won't show much. And I'm hoping it doesn't dull my brighter colors because, you know me, I like to use bright colors. Okay, so this is the marigold, which is kind of a golden yellow, but it's still bright. It's like an orangey yellow, I guess you would call it. It's the color of marigolds. Okay, I'm trying to pour a thin line, but, you know, as you can see, when you're using a cup, that doesn't work. This is also a plastic cup, so I can't really... Squeeze it in the center without the possibility of cracking it. So that's why I'm not squeezing it to make like a little spout. And I can tell right now I'm going to have to turn the air conditioning on. I hate to because my air conditioning, the system is right here beside me in the next room and it gets loud, but I am hot. And here's the bright yellow, the cadmium yellow. So I've got quite a lot of paint going on here. It may be too much. Okay. So I'm gonna turn the air on real quick. Okay, and then I'm gonna swipe with white. So I'm going to this would, these would just be little baby leaves that are kind of at the top. They're not the, not the main leaves. The white and the black, neither one have silicone in them. I just want to make sure that that's clear. Because if you have silicone in every color, it'll still probably do cells, but you get the contrast a little bit, I think, more in... Um, you don't want so many cells, but of course, you know, these paintings of mine typically have a good amount of cells on them. So I'm going to, I can't use my big tool because these are 16 by 20 canvases and that tool is way too big. Even this middle size scraper that I have, well, I might be able to use that. See, so I have my little one, like on here, this is a great size for these smaller leaves. And this requires a very light touch. Like there, I went too hard and it, it went down to the black. So you, it requires a very light skim kind of motion over the top of your canvas. You are just skimming the paint. You're not scraping the canvas. That's true with swiping. When you swipe in a line and you're using a big tool or a paper, a wet paper towel, you're laying it down and you're just softly dragging it through. You're not applying a lot of pressure. Okay, so here are the leaves and I'm going to try to go about halfway into the middle of the leaf on each leaf. And some people will tell me, why do you waste your paint and not do something else with it? Because, number one, the amount of space I have, I'm working on my dining room table. Number two, I like to stay in my zone of working on the art and not make it about what comes off of my scraper. So, that is why I don't always uh, worry about what comes off. So here, 
I took off a little too much paint. I'm just trying to put a little bit back on there. Sometimes it's easier to go in one direction as opposed to another. Somebody told me to use my left hand, but I am right-handed and I am so spastic with my left hand, it's not even funny. Okay, so swiping in about halfway. I didn't go quite halfway on that one. Here comes my air kicking in. That's that noise in the background. And there I scraped the paint off all together. And I do want, I want the white on the edges because pasta leaves have that light edge. So I'm going to have to turn this canvas here. I'm a messy painter too. better look going in a certain direction with my swiping. I went I went the wrong way on that one. And you can tell when you when you don't quite hit it just right, you you know that you've kind of messed it up. Let's see I swipe that one okay. You want your paint to be thick enough to where you don't have edges that are, you know, areas that show through on your canvas. But if you get too much paint, then you get this huge puddle of paint too. So there's, there's one. And I'm gonna take my smaller and just kind of blend in that white a little bit more. Okay, so on this one, Hosta leaves are actually a little bit more rounded. I should have made them a little bit more round, but it's kind of too late now. The gist is to make it feel tropical and kind of abstract. So it's not about making it look real. I've been a realistic acrylic artist for 20 years, and this is what I enjoy about this kind of painting is it's not realism, it is freedom to let the paint do its magic by itself, kind of. You're just helping it along, but the paint is creating the magic. It's not, it's not thick and consistency. I just have a lot of paint on the canvas is what I mean by that. Um, it's very fluid as far as the thickness goes. So, turn it back around. And I don't want these to look like marijuana leaves. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> um, let me get back in line with the camera here. I'm, 
I'm notorious for getting my canvases off of the, the camera range, so I'm sorry about that. But I'm going to add one more leaf. Smaller right here. And um, like I said, that that metallic color, I don't really see it. It's the one that almost looks grayed down. So that was probably a bad choice on my part. <clears throat> <clears throat> These are imaginary hosta leaves, and that's H-O-S-T-A is how they're spelled if you're not familiar with the hosta leaf. And I'm going back in here just to kind of help fill back in the outline a little bit, because I did want them to be kind of outlined, because the variegated ones do look that way. <clears throat> and then, so these are going to be short stalks, but typically they have these little stalks that come out from the center of the cluster of leaves. They, they usually grow in these clusters and they can get, these things can get multiple feet wide. They can they can grow out three, four feet across in a cluster, um, like a bush, but there is just a cluster of large leaves. And only during certain times of the year they bloom. And the ones that I have seen in North Carolina <clears throat> have kind of purpley, lilac, lilac colored flowers. And I may want to get a little bit more creative than just lilac. And then they're probably not going to look like true flowers because of it being a pore painting. So I'm thinking I'm going I'm to do one of them first. I'm just going to do some dots. So that's the uh, deoxysane purple. This is the purple rain, which is a, a medium colored purple. And I'm not even trying, I'm not trying to get the dots on the dots. I'm just trying to get it in the general vicinity. Because I'm going to try to make them look like just little clusters of flowers. <coughs> I think I'll add just a little bit of magenta for a little, a little excitement, not just all purple. And then white will be the kind of the top part. And I haven't done this before, so this is all an experiment. Now, I'm trying to decide. This looks like about the size I want. This is some hair oil that's in a glass vial that I tried one time in a pour and it didn't really work out. It's some kind of a, it's supposed to be like a Moroccan oil and it, it I don't think I've really liked it. But anyway, I'm just splashing into the paint.
add in some more white. And I actually have little little petals that kind of point out or point up. So I'm just going to take my butter knife. And just not swiping really, I'm just kind of directing the stuff in an outward kind of, you know, fashion. Eh, it's okay. On this one, I'd like to add more of a periwinkle blue. So I'm adding bright blue into the mixture. It's a deco art color. So I'm doing my purple dots again. And the, uh, the purple. Then I'm going to do some bright blue, which is not a light blue. I'd really like a periwinkle, but I don't have it. Well, I do actually have a periwinkle now that I think about it. I had it in a little container. It's in a little baby food container. I used it weeks ago, so it's been sitting a while, but I'm going to throw a little bit of this into it. And then the white. It's like a big puddle of paint, this thick. But when I say thick, not the not the actual paint, just the how much paint I have on the canvas is what I mean. Add a yellow kind of highlight to these stems.
I thought about trying to to blow the flowers, but I figured I'd just make a big mess. So um, I'm not going to blow them. So I'm just going back where the areas are a little bit thin. And then also, I'm just trying to round out these leaves a little bit. But I'm not going to do too much because you don't want to retouch and kind of mess up what you got going on. If you don't like something, you can still kind of go back and swipe over, but you can't swipe too many times because then it will turn into mud. So I'm just going back on the areas where I don't like the way it looks or where I scrape too hard down to the canvas. <coughs> Here's an area that's just color. There's no cells or anything, so I'm just blending it, blending it a little bit better. Okay, I think I'm just going to leave this as is. Get rid of some of my splatters. If you have areas that, you know, you want to cover because they've got a smudge of this, you just put a dot of paint on your finger from the black mixture, which is the same as all your other colors, it's just got no silicone in it. And just smooth it out and it'll cover up your little splashes. And I'll leave some splashes, it's not, it's not all that bad to have um, a few. So there's my attempt at hostel leaves. Kind of a tropical look. Whoops.
crazy about this leaf here. So if you go too hard, which the metal knife, it does go too hard. If you use it with the, the card or whatever else, you can skim it very lightly. And almost you're almost kind of parallel with the canvas. Um, people say they don't have any luck doing it the way I do it. I don't know what, there's no magic secret. I'm just squirting paint on the canvas and swiping. Uh, but I can say that it's with a very, very light touch that I do the swiping. So like the areas that are you know, light without much color, just can dabble it in. So this is just where I try to clean up or make some of my areas look a little bit better. This is where the credit card is good too on just doing very soft um, swiping with very little pressure. Not pressure at all, really, just a very light touch and just skimming. Skimming along. So these are definitely more kind of abstract looking, probably than I, you know, my taste for sure. But I wanted to give it a try and see how it turned out. Like I said, I buy these canvases black already at the store, but if you don't have a store that has black canvases, all you do is you put a coat of black acrylic paint and then I still skim it with the black Floetrol mixture and it will dry like there's areas of this black that are already dry but it will dry as you as you do your swiping and all but um, it just gives underneath where you're putting your colors a little bit of a wet uh, surface to paint on and it, since you're Moving your color very gently, it it does not drag the the black up. If you scrape it hard, it is going to bring the black up. It's going to also go down all the way to the canvas, and you're going to see the black popping through, which is what, not what you want. And um, so the black doesn't really it, the black does not mix into the color. And, um, but that's because you're doing it with a very light touch. So as you see, I keep fiddling as I talk. Stick a little turquoise here. So anytime you have an area you don't like, you just... You can kind of rework it as long as you keep a really light touch. But there's areas that like here, 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 that are, they've got a lot of paint on them. But with this kind of fluid art, it dries in about 24 hours and it'll be dry tonight, but the thickest areas will still be wet tomorrow. And so they'll keep drying tomorrow. But it's not like a pouring where you pour the paint and you have a puddle of paint on your canvas and that stays thick until it dries and levels out. This will dry quicker than a typical puddle pour or a dirty pour paint painting. So um, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, 
please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I appreciate you watching. Thank you. So I brought the camera down and I'm just giving you kind of a close up look at these and I'm hoping the white will kind of tone down as it dries. It's kind of loud right now, but um, we'll see. And then there's the flowers, which are just splashes and swishes. Um, this one has the magenta in it. The other had the blue tones, so I just wanted them a little bit slightly different. But, you know, it's very abstract looking. It's not realistic by any means which I like because I'm just enjoying the process of painting without trying to make something look real. I enjoy that. So there they are. I'll post the video and the pictures at the end of the video will be pictures when they're totally dry. Thank you.